After watching this video, you're going to have a solid understanding of what recursion is, how it works, see examples, and have a game plan to study and practice questions. Recursion is used to solve questions with all the main data structures, arrays, trees, and graphs, but the sub-patterns for arrays are the foundation to using recursion with trees and graphs, so here we will first cover recursion with arrays and we will get to trees and graphs later. Backtracking specifically is the sub-pattern that will be the entry point for recursion in trees and graphs, but before we talk about it, we need to get good with basic recursion. In recursion, we make a decision to 1. Explore a new state and 2. Reduce the decision space or break down the problem into a smaller problem until we reach the base case and compute the value of the current state. That's it. Let's break this down with an example. Here we are calculating the factorial of a number. This example is simple, but any recursion boils down to the decision we make to explore new states, reduce the decision space, and what we compute as the value for the current state. The state is represented by the values of the parameters of the recursive function. So in this case, it's only the value of n. The decision we make is the recursive call, and we need to make sure that the argument we pass in the recursive call explores a new state and reduces the decision space. Here we always pass n minus 1, so it's always going to be a new state, but we are also reducing the decision space because each decision brings us closer to the base case. The value we compute for the current state is whatever we return for each recursion. Here we return n multiplied by factorial of n minus 1. And finally, the base case is a state that we know the value for and can return it directly. We must have at least one state that we know its value that each decision ultimately leads to, otherwise we will end up in an infinite recursion. The tricky part in the beginning is to understand in every recursion how the value of the current state is computed based on values of deeper states so we know what decision to make and what value to return. How do you go from that being tricky to your second nature? Not by thinking, well, not only by thinking. You need to write down and sketch so you could visualize what exactly is going on, because when we do recursion, all these states are basically nodes in a tree. Let's see another example. Here we want to compute the nth power of some number x. Our base case is when n is equal to 0, in that case we always return 1, because any number to the power of 0 equals 1. If n is a positive number, then we want to get closer to our base case and reduce the decision space by exploring what's the value of the number to the power of n minus 1 is. Then the value of the number to the power of n would be the number itself multiplied by the number to the power of n minus 1. If n is negative, then we just use algebra to compute the value of the number to the power of minus n and then return that value inverted. One small observation before we are done with this question is that if n is an even number, we can do better than reducing the decision space by 1. We can actually halve it because again, thanks to algebra, in that case we know we can square the number. So in that case we will be exploring less states in the decision tree, which means that we will go less deep in the call stack and therefore use less memory and time. Again, to make this really click, you need to sketch things down. Recursion is a visual thing. You're traversing a tree and you make decisions each time for which state or node to traverse next and what you want to compute. You're not going to build intuition to see how to write up a recursive solution by just reading the code when you study a solution for a question or only write down values of parameters when you make a dry run. In the last two examples, the decision tree was more like a linked list because with each state we only made one decision to explore only one new state. But if in some other recursion we sometimes explore more than one state, then it starts looking like a tree and every decision should eventually lead to one of the leaf nodes which are the base cases. And this is the perfect segue to backtracking and that's really the main sub-pattern for recursion in arrays that is going to build the foundation for trees and graphs. Because in backtracking we are not just making the recursive call and returning but we do processing after the recursive call before we return or before the next recursive call which means we also do logic as we go up the recursion tree. Here's how it works with an example for finding subsets of unique elements in an array. Each state is the subset we are exploring. And since we want to return all the subsets, our processing would be just to save it in the result array. Now we are going to make multiple recursive calls. So from each state, we'll be branching out to multiple new states based on the subsets we want to find. 
Before we traverse the next state, we do any pre-processing to update what we are computing. And in this case, we just choose the next number from the array to traverse its subtree of the next subsets. When we traverse the next state, we need to reduce the decision space as always. And here we can each time increment the entry point to the array since we've already traversed all the states with the current starting point. The only thing that's left is that as we come up the tree for traversing the next states, we want to undo the last update to our state, and this is the backtracking part. This is pretty much how it's going to look like for all the backtracking questions. Again, initially, it's going to be tricky to see how you want to do the pre-processing for the next state, and what is the next state that you actually want to traverse, but just like with basic recursion, make sure you sketch the decision tree so you can visualize which nodes you want to traverse and in what order. The more you build decision trees with pen and paper, the faster you're going to build intuition and solve questions because you will start getting used to identifying what your recursive solution should look like based on the tree you wrote down. This is the single most important thing to get good at recursion and backtracking, but also to build the foundation for trees and graphs, since usually questions for these data structures are solved recursively. And oftentimes you will need to do some processing as you return from neighboring nodes in a graph, or as you go up the tree like when you need to find the lowest common ancestor and in many other questions for these data structures, which we will get to later on. So with that said, thank you for watching.